Hey guys, it's Chad here. Sorry, my uh, clock is usually a tick down, but it wasn't ticking down, so it started without me knowing. Uh, today, let's talk about clients and are they driving you a little bit crazy? We all know that they can, and I just want to go over a couple points that I use in my head kind of to deal with that. And I would love to hear what you guys think and what you guys are doing when you're dealing with clients, like say high needs clients or clients that have bigger expectations than possibly you thought you were getting into. So number one, the first thing I do is I make sure I list out exactly the whole scope of the job. I make sure that everything I'm doing is written down because that way you have something to go to. So if it's beyond the scope of what you're being asked to do, you can go to that and you can see uh, what exactly you agreed to do. So make sure you write everything down. I know there's a lot of times you just show up to a job and you just say, okay, I'm just gonna show up and I'm going to do this, 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 and this, and I'll just charge them for that. Well then you, at the end of the job, you hand them the bill and they're just freaking out. So one way to get rid of a high needs client is to realize that sometimes we create the high needs clients. If there is a change to anything, I highly suggest writing out a change order. If you don't know what that is, Google it. I'm sure all of us have dealt with them before. Change order is just saying this is beyond the scope and this is gonna cost this much more to do, so this is what I need to, to do. Can you sign off on this? And then they'll sign off on that. So there's that. Um, another thing to do is to realize that for you this might just be a job, and I'm talking specifically to us doing home renos and that sort of thing. For these people, this is like their house, and this is their place of safety, and you're coming in and you're making a mess, and you are changing things, and they're feeling displaced. So you need to change your mindset a bit and realize that perhaps they're in this kind of high agitated state because can you imagine having to live in that yourself? It's not always easy. So they might be a little bit on edge, so we have to extend a little bit of grace to these clients of ours. So those are two things that I do is I make sure that I realize that these people are in a mindset where they're just feeling a little bit out of sorts and so I have to remember that when I'm dealing with them. So if they get a little agitated, there's a reason for that. And you have to maintain your calm and realize where they're coming from, just like in any relationship. And two, make sure you have everything written out, a complete scope, walk through it. I always start my jobs out with a walkthrough of the client, and kind of a check off of what needs to be done. And that way, I, then I type it up, write it up and send it off to them for them to approve. Then if there's a change, this is my third tip, there's a change, make sure you capture that in a change order. So that's how I deal with high needs clients. Now, I kind of jokingly call them high needs clients, but I also have to realize that generally the reason why they are high needs clients is because we have put them in that state. So our job partly is to do the technical side of things, to wire stuff up or plumb stuff in or whatever, but it's also a people job as well, right? So we have to remember that, that we have to kind of keep them feeling safe with us. And there's gonna be times where honestly there's gonna be that one client that just you won't be able to work with and that's when you sometimes have to consider firing your client and moving on. The amount of money that you're gonna make from that job is probably not gonna be worth the agitation. I can honestly, I've, I think I've had one client like that in my whole career and that was a long time ago, but every other client I've had has been good. But sometimes there is that client that's gonna come along and uh, just drive you nuts and there's just nothing you can do and they're just in such a state and you're gonna put you into a crazy state too. So. There will come times, kind of go with your gut on that one. And that's it, guys. Um, what I would suggest is if you look on my Facebook page, again, I'm just gonna call attention to this. I've got a PDF for online resources for electricians. If you haven't downloaded that yet, please download it. I put it available on my Facebook page yesterday and it went through the roof and I'm getting lots of great feedback on it. So I'm gonna be amending that thing pretty soon, but there's still tons of great content in there. And if you're into the code or any kind of problems with theory, I know there's a lot of electrical apprentices out there and students, check that thing out. It's pretty awesome. So all you have to do is go to my Facebook page and click on the learn more button. You'll see there's a big banner with a douchey looking guy with a beard smoking a pipe. It says, don't be like this guy. Download this PDF. Download that PDF. All right, guys, I will see you later on. And uh, expect to see, for those of you who are part of the email list, I will be sending out that email, the newsletter on Friday and we're gonna be covering Evernote. Last week we covered notes on your phone. So there's the notes app on the iPhone and different notes apps that you can use on the Android and how I use them. All right, if you want part of that mailing list, go to that PDF and that automatically gets you synced up to the mailing list as well. All right, have a great day guys, work safe and I will talk to you tomorrow.